All right, I got it. You ready? Yo, Krubies, welcome back to another In the News. As always, I am joined by Erica from the Horror Cafe Podcast and Gaming. What's up? We're are you, here. Are you sick of me yet? Never. Dude, we're going on Do how it. many how many hours of recording here? You're still dancing. That I means you're having a good time, I feel. It's this soda, or what is this thing? The sparkling water. Yeah, with no caffeine, though. Dude, two with hours no in, and we're still going strong. We got it. I'm, I'm out of town for a week. We had to knock it out. So we're going to do two in one night. I hope that I don't lose my charm. I You are still dancing and ready to go. So, I mean, I've got this pure leaf tea that has an ungodly amount of caffeine in it. So, so you're ready too. It should be fine. <laughs> it should be fine. All the patrons out there, you have got probably 15 or 20 minutes of behind the scenes stuff on this episode. Basically, it's us just talking about what goes into doing a podcast and video game uh, recordings. And I'm going to sound stupid because I don't know anything about that <laughs> stuff. Although, the Switch is coming, dude. Not like the Switch of like me switching anything around, but like the game. I'm excited for you. And for Charlotte. but And her. Yeah. She, well, it's really, it's a my, yeah. I'm going to take it from her little ass. She doesn't need it. But no, I'm thinking about getting Mario Party. Do you play that? Uh, I don't, but mm. I've heard it's a lot of fun. And I, I mean, for you guys and the kids, I think that'll be a lot of fun. I'm excited. Like, please report how it goes. I will. Because I'm excited for her, for everyone. It's always exciting when a new system comes into the house. It will. It's going to be fun. Hopefully, I just, you know, I don't, yep. my productivity doesn't just, you know, that would be that, terrible. I hear you because that's what happens to me. <laughs> I'm hooked on this game and that's what's delayed <laughs> Any other, uh, what is this, like creativity of mm. podcasts yeah. and videos, but it's all right. I'm still going right. back to the idea that I pitched to everybody like three years ago. I was like, why do we all have our own separate thing? Let's just all join together and have one big podcast network thing and we can all help each other out. But everybody, and, and I get it, but people were like, nah, no, 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 no. We could help each other. It's a lot of work. <laughs> As it's we lot, talked dude. about. It's, it's a, a lot, lot. But you know what? It's okay. Everybody's doing their own thing. Everybody's doing great. And I'm happy for everyone. I am rocking the Foo Fighters shirt. Their new album is fantastic. If you have not listened to it, go listen to it. I listen to it at least once a day since this came out. It's great. You were stuck in an hour and a half traffic jam and didn't even... What did you listen to, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, an audiobook. <laughs> ah. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. You got to get your reading in. Yeah. So... I was still productive, but I could have sometimes I get in the car and I'm not I'm in the mood for music. But mm. and I get in ruts where I'm like, well, I don't know what to listen to now. And I forgot about that. So I'm sure I will be stuck in traffic tomorrow. There you go. So I will. I'll listen to it then. There you go. You can do it. But let's, you know, we've been at it for two hours. Let's just go ahead and jump into it. Not to try to shorten the episode or anything. I'm sure there's enough news here because I'm going to go on a couple tirades. I already know it. But top news, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse makes $120.5 million domestically. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but that is more than The Little Mermaid, correct? Uh, yes, and it was more than Guardians. <sighs> Wow, I didn't realize that this was so popular. I I had a feeling so um I have a story for not a, it's a quick thing. I went to the theater this weekend. I went to watch The Boogeyman, which they we can put this combine these two. It debuted at 20 million worldwide. So, mm. that's a huge difference in these two movies. I went at 2:40 in the afternoon. My theater and I mean like the lobby, not the actual auditorium, was so packed. Oh, really? It was amazing because I hadn't seen that in a long time. And it was so great. To, and they were all there. Pretty, I'm pretty sure it was for Spider-Man because it was a lot of young people there. But I have to say the Boogeyman Theater Auditorium that I was in had a lot of people in it as well. Like more than I thought. Yeah that it would but it was so great and when i left the theater because it was a lot later oh my even more full more people coming in the concession stand was packed the ticket line was full it was great so i knew this movie was wow. gonna kill it i knew it for a and brief second i thought you were gonna say they were there to see fast and the furious no sorry <laughs> i don't think so i don't even they weren't even there to see guardians so i mean uh. all these movies are old now it's only like 
three weeks, but it's old and movie news. But mm-hmm. it was just exciting. I had a feeling that this movie was going to kill it. And uh, I have heard nothing but great things about it. I would actually love to see it in the theater because it, it would probably be great. But I don't think I'll ever get to go see it. But I'll watch it at home and enjoy it. The animation looks like it's great on that one. So this is a sequel to the... F- is there yeah. a, There's one before this. Yeah, that one is into the Spider-Verse, I think. I want to say Lucy liked that and watched it. I don't know. I admittedly, I think everybody knows, I am not a Spider-Man fan. I just, yeah. I am just not. It's not my thing. Um, yeah. But I th- I'm pretty sure Lucy liked it. I don't know that I'll go see it. Maybe. I doubt it because of just what I have going on the next like yeah, six weeks or ridiculous. Yeah. But Boogeyman, do you, I have not heard anything bad about Boogeyman thus far. Oh, well, I I mean, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody. For me, it was okay. okay. It wasn't anything. I didn't find it to be anything innovative. And the trailer ruined stuff for me again. So mm-hmm. I think I've, I've come to this conclusion that for horror movies, I don't want to watch trailers anymore <laughs> because they just give away a lot of jump scares. We know this with Evil Dead Rise. Yeah. like. It's just really frustrating because that's also the reason I like going to horror movies. This one, I had a particularly bad week at work. I wanted to go to this movie and just like jump and scream and yeah. just be entertained like that. But I wasn't. So mm. that probably could have influenced my decision. But it wasn't anything. It wasn't bad. I've seen way worse movies, but it wasn't like as amazing as other people are saying. It just didn't do anything for me. But I'd like to see whatever you, what you think when you watch it. The, so I guess I should preface, but I should have preface by saying the people that I so I listen <laughs> to a bunch of different podcasts and watch a bunch yeah. of different YouTubers. The ones that I had watched uh, their spoiler free reviews of this were people mm-hmm. that kind of migrate away from wanting jump scares. So they like okay. I think what it was compared to from a storyline perspective was that it was very uh, in the same vein as like the Babadook. It's a lot of trauma. It's a lot of, yeah. uh, is there a monster? Is there not a monster? Like this, this kind of back and forth like that, which we just covered the Babadook. I never watched it before. I'll never watch it again, but uh, and I liked it. I liked the movie a lot. It's just so depressing. I don't, I don't like movies like depressing. that. I do not like um, movies like that at all. So I'm questioning after hearing those guys because they were like, oh, you know, it's they weren't saying it was the best movie in the world. They were just saying that it was better than they thought it was going to be, which to me, for mm-hmm. a Stephen King movie, that's a win. Yeah, I forgot that. Th- I always forget that this is a Stephen King movie. I I mean, I wouldn't put I think Babadook is better with the whole trauma and what it with the monster thing, I thought that one was way better. Yeah. Um, this one kind of, I saw somebody somewhere compare it kind of like to smile mm. with like the curse thing, like the continuing yeah. of something, but uh, it's still not giving anything away, but I thought smile was better. So that's what I'm saying. Like it's, if it felt like things we've already watched in horror and not anything new or making it better or just putting a different spin on it. So I was just kind of let down and I feel bad because I realized that a lot of people liked it. And even Mark from Elm Street asked me, I'm like, I didn't, (laughs) I liked, it was okay. It wasn't anything like, oh my God. Right. right. And I I hate when I don't like something that everybody else likes. I'm like, I'm sorry. But Uh, I didn't. That's, I mean, hey, you have your own opinion and I can appreciate that. I have not seen it. I probably will not watch it in theaters, unfortunately, because i would envision will probably be out of theaters by the time I could watch it. Um, yeah. And there's like, if I had to go to the movies right now, I would would not see this. I would either see the, the machine or I would see um, Fast Ten X, right. whatever the frick we're calling it. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I I would like to see it, but I don't know that it's one I'm gonna run out and see before it's it's out of theaters. Because I was thinking about maybe going to the movies tomorrow night, but then I'm like I'm leaving for a week, so I don't really want to do that. But Nonetheless, um, The Flash drops June 16th. So Mm. where are you at with this movie? No, just no. I saw (laughs) I saw the trailer for this before Evil Dead Rise, which was like, why is this trailer here? Yeah, Um, 
I will say the trailers before Boogeyman were great. They had um, The Nun 2. Okay. Teaser was there. And I will not watch anything else beyond that teaser because uh, just the teaser was good, I will say. They had Five Nights at Freddy's, which we've seen, and The Blackening, which actually looks funny. Mm. I had never heard of it, but it's a horror comedy, but it looks decent. Um, So they actually did show some horror movies. But anyway, I saw the Flash trailer and I'm like... Here we go. CGI, <laughs> CGI heaven, CGI heaven. Yeah, I'm not invested in the flash. I honestly don't know anything about him and I I'm good. I'm not watching this. Are you watching this? How do you feel about this? No, I'm first off. I think that um, the fact that this movie is even coming out is astonishing to me. The only thing I can come up with is that they have so much money invested in this movie already that they didn't want to lose yeah lose it all by not having it come out based on all this Ezra Miller stuff. But um, I'm also not a huge Flash fan. I'm also not a nostalgic Michael Keaton as Batman fan either. Again, Mike Batman is Christian Bale. and I really like the Ben Affleck, Batflick version of uh, Batman. And honestly, I didn't mind the Val Kilmer version of Batman. It's not the greatest, but it's definitely better than George Clooney. But for Mike, Michael Keaton, like, okay, I, I'm, that's not enough to get me to go see this movie. Yeah. Um, I know that Ben Affleck is supposed to be in it a little bit, but the other thing is we know because of what James Gunn is doing with the DC universe that they're not, this is it. Like it doesn't matter if this movie does good or not. Like the movie's basically going to be, uh, canned. this whole, this whole universe is going to be canned. Yeah. So I, I just don't care. Um, if it were like Aquaman, I would go see it. I like Jason Momoa and I'd want to support him. But like, I think that Ezra Miller's a, garbage human being so like i don't have any desire to go see or support this movie i do yeah. like andy musietti a lot who he is the director of this he also directed mama he directed the it movies um he is the director of this which kind of sucks um for oh, him wow, yeah however from what i've heard and this kind of goes into the next bullet point here is that andy musietti uh, is the top pick to direct batman brave and the bull which is one of james gunn's new dc universe properties so i would say okay this movie's probably going to be good based on them pulling him over to uh, the new DCU. And yeah. I like him a lot. I think what him and his sister do with the It movies is unprecedented. I didn't mind Agreed. the Mama movie. I don't think it's like anything heralding, but it's also not terrible. It's just, it's okay. I don't know if you've ever seen it or not. You see, you see how you feel about Mama? It's okay. That's how I feel about the Boogeyman. It's like, okay. okay. Kind of like that. I was like, I feel the same about Mama as well. I didn't even know that was him, but it is I mean, I I don't a masterpiece, honestly. <laughs> it's like Agreed. What him and his sister did is amazing. That's great. I'm always in to see a new interpretation of Batman and with him directing it, I I'm in. And I think the Michael Keaton I like Michael Keaton Batman. That's the one I grew up with. Mm -hmm. But we're going back. I think they brought that in to maybe save the movie to add that yet again, more yeah. nostalgia factor, try to bring people in. But that's definitely not even a reason for me. Actually, when I saw him show up in the trailer, I, I was like, what? Really? <laughs> like, this is your saving. Gra Bye. <laughs> Next trailer, please. Right. And you get like double Ezra Miller. He's like playing himself twice in there. And then, yeah. yeah, they're bringing that in. It's like, why, why not bring Christian Bay? Like, why not try to get them all back then? Like, I know Val Kilmer, obviously they can't do that, but like, why not, why not get Christian Bale? If you're going to have all of them, like why not at yeah. least try, right? Or in George Clinch. And I think that George Clooney Batman is terrible, but at the same time, if you're going to do, like I don't, I don't know. It's just weird. Yeah. I don't, I, it's just weird. I, I think that was just a way to like save the movie or try to get more people to go because it's, the, like you said, you really hit it when you said it that episode that it's just nostalgia fever. Yeah. And whatever people can do. I mean, I don't know if you've seen this on Instagram, but like VHS is back. That's what I, I like. Is it, are they even real VHSs or are they just like the cases with the DVDs in them? <laughs> <laughs> no, like they're legit VHS. Like uh, I saw it on Bloody Disgusting. I should have put it on here, but I don't remember what movie it was. They announced that they're releasing it on VHS. Like what? I Can you even buy a VHS player? I could will. <laughs> Maybe. Oh man, I'm all digital, dude. Like I have a bunch of physical 
Blu-ray, 4K, all that stuff. But like, I still don't put them in and watch them. If I'm being honest, yeah. I do the stream because I'm lazy. Agree, but it's just that. But that when I saw that, I just thought about that conversation that we had, and it's just it's it is nostalgia fever times a thousand, dude. Like it's all about that, and I'm all for it to a point. Like yeah, like and for this movie, like it just doesn't work. It doesn't convince me to do anything or interest me. So yep. Not not for me. I'm, I'm with the, you there. Same way. Plus the fact that this just feels like the DCU chasing the MCU again because they've already done this with Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> like, do we need to do this? Like a Yeah. But whatever. It's, it's whatever. Yep. Yeah. But, I am happy for Andy Musietti. He he I do like him as a director. I think what he does is yeah. he, he hasn't really put out a bad property yet. So it'll be interesting. It's it's good to see that he isn't being pulled down with that movie um and being associated with it, which in today's Hollyweird, like that's usually if you're associated with anything that has some sort of negative tie to it, which I again I'm shocked this movie is even coming out based on Yeah. Based on what what happened there, but um, Jen Ortega to become producer on Wednesday season two plans to ditch the romance lean towards more horror. This doesn't shock me at all because there have been, this is what I was talking about earlier. I was going to wait and talk about it here. Yeah. There are, have been, I've watched a ton of interviews with her where she had to like intervene on certain instances yeah. of the Wednesday recording and say, I don't feel like Wednesday would act this way or I don't feel like Wednesday would uh, make this decision or she would look at a certain person this way. Um, so I can only imagine what it looked like before she had intervened and, and made all those changes to it and ultimately made the character her own. So yeah. I'm, uh, I'm assuming this is a product of that, of her already taking on that role and making that character her. And like, let's be honest, if she decides tomorrow, she doesn't want to play Wednesday anymore. That whole series is dead. Yeah. Because that that's hers now. And that's what I was saving as well from the other episode that this is where I think she will have some kind of heart in horror forever, hopefully because of this, that she wants to lean it more towards horror instead of having romance. And I what I th I think when I was reading the article, she's like even to the costume choices, like she wants to be part of that. And what is she? I don't even think she's twenty five. And she's a producer on this huge show. You're on Beetlejuice sequel. Like, damn, girl, <laughs> we need to rethink this. Like, what did I do wrong? All these choices. Damn it. <laughs> Jenna Ortega is 20 years old. I didn't even know she was that young. I thought she was at least like 23. So, you know, that's that's crazy. That's amazing for her good for her and more that she is supporting horror and i that's why I, I think she will always support it like mia goth i just hope they like we said she can fly and try other things for sure but yeah. hopefully her heart will always be in the horror community with us i think it will i i mean you never know my my worry though if i'm being completely honest is with this new beetlejuice movie because i hope that and again, she's very talented. She is great at playing Wednesday. She's done great things there. I don't. I hope this isn't the case, but like I, I'm terrified that she's going to be the same character in that movie. And she, uh, I think they released a picture, and I mean, she kind of looks the same in it. Like it's, but it, it's Tim Burton too. So he has a lot of that like repetitive looking characters. It's his style, so right. I get it. But when you use the same actors, like I can see, because even um, so Edward Scissorhands and Beetlejuice, they both have Winona Ryder and they both she looks the same in both. She's the same like emo kind of goth girl in those two movies. Yeah, so that's kind of what I feel like is happening here. So let's see, hopefully, hopefully not that she doesn't get to get typecast with that. Right. Well, I mean, they're both professionals at what they do and I'm sure they'll figure yeah. it out. I just, I hope that's not the case. So it'll be interesting to see how that character is portrayed, but Hey, good for her, dude. Cause she's doing fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like a by 20. <laughs> it's crazy. Crazy. I, I think she I will probably become, uh, that's a pretty big projection. I think she's going to become probably the biggest actor. Like, who's the highest paid actor, right? I know, like, for a while, it was Angelina Jolie. Mm. 
Uh, Julia Roberts before her, I think, if I remember correctly. And then Sandra Bullock was in there somewhere at some point, I think. Yeah, she. I know she's pretty big. Uh, I don't know. I Honestly, I feel like I don't know who's popular now because everybody's everywhere. Everybody's having revivals because yeah. of nostalgia. So it's just hard to really grasp who the it person is right now. Abby I definitely think I she's one at, of them. Yeah. Abby and I looked it up a while. It was probably a few years ago, but it was so jaded because of the Marvel movies. So like mm. the actors in those Marvel movies, clearly those movies make a lot of money. So those people get paid a lot. And so it was like yeah. a lot of it was Marvel characters. But like if you take that out, it was different. I remember we were looking it up, but um, yeah, yeah, no good for Jenna. I'm happy for her. She's, she's doing mm-hmm. great. Wrong turn. Oh, this is going to be great. Wrong turn creator oh, yeah. Alan McElroy hopes to make two sequels to the 2021 reboot. Uh, dude, I am here for it. I put this just for you. I, I think I'm the only one out just fighting this fight, pushing for this, dude. Like, hey, have you watched this movie? <laughs> Yeah, I watched it because of you. <laughs> that's right. Okay, I'm making sure. I didn't know. I think everybody yeah. I know this watches because I bullied them into it. Yeah, you did not bully me. You convinced me, and I watched it. I did fully enjoy it. I thought it was a great, uh, I guess, remake, right? Remake of... A re- we'll call it a reboot. Requel, soft reboot. Yeah. Requel, reboot, whatever. Um, You know, darker, modern, but then it had the whole, like, twist of the village... Th- I thought it was the ending is like, oh, my God. Yes. Whoa, it didn't see that coming at all. Great ending. Um, So I'm in for that style and to see more from that, because I also just like the style of it, like the filming of it, the mm. grant, the filter, all of it. It was just really well done. So I'm in. But I definitely added this for you. When I saw this, I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> add this in. Didn't, yeah, I, I bet he doesn't know. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have any idea until I read it. And then I got all excited and I wanted to talk about it. Dude, our wrong turf 2021 is so good. Like, I know there's people out there that disagree with me, and that's fine. Everybody has their own opinion. But, like, the, the, what they did with that movie, and I think we I have a whole episode. I think I did an episode on here, and I maybe went on somebody else's podcast to talk about it. But go check out wrong turf 2021 episode. I, I rant and rave about how great this movie is. So, I hope that they keep all those same elements in it because. Yeah. In my opinion, it's one of the best movies that includes social commentary. I know that whoever comments on the YouTube video is going to tell me that I don't know what social commentary is and the, the yada, yada, yada. But like the approach that they take with that movie is so good and so spot on in how just everybody looks at everybody else so differently. But then in a crisis, when everybody has to come together, generally cooler heads prevail. And we're really not that different. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we can get from it. It's really well done. So I'm I'm in it. I like where they took it. And uh, I think they should strike now while it's still fresh and uh, make it happen. I'm in it. That ending was so good. I love movies that end with like those memorable endings that you're yes. like, oh, shit. Dude, it's good. so good. That's why I tell everybody, like, even if you hate it, stick around till the, at least do yourself a favor and stick around yeah. till the end. But yeah, so absolutely. Good. Uh, the Expendables 4 trailer is out. I love the Expendables movies because I'm a meathead, but I have not watched this trailer yet. I can't I envision either. that it's going to be any different than the first three. And that means yeah. I'm going to love it. I watched the, I watched the first one in theater. Okay. Actually, back in the day. Um, I enjoyed it. I mean, it's what, it's a it's an action movie with all these big stars, right? Yes. Cuz you know, we haven't seen them in a I'm a bit I like Stallone, like I'm a Rocky fan. Yeah. Like I hadn't watched it ever until maybe like 5 years ago and I was like <gasps> how could I have lived without watching this movie? It's so great. Like that is great storytelling. I, you know, the underdog, I love that those kind of movies. I've realized actually that I haven't watched Hustle yet. I know I have to watch it that I actually I'm not a big sports person, but I do enjoy sports movies or sports stories because they're always like it's an underdog story most of the time or like a success story. And there's always like this good feeling from them. And it's like, I don't know. It's always like, yes, I feel motivated. It's uplifting. Go make it. It's exactly. It's very uplifting. It makes you want to like go out there and try to make it happen in your life or whatever. It doesn't have to be sports. But the point is, 
Um, I'm sure this is one of those fun action movies. Let's see. I only watched the first one. Honestly, until like recently, I didn't even know there were more <laughs> beyond two. I didn't know. I was like, oh, OK, because, uh, again, it's so hard to keep up with yeah. a lot of what's going on. And if you're not into whatever you're into in a franchise, like you're not going to know right. that there's more movies. So. Well, I like Stallone. I really like his show Tulsa King on Paramount Plus. It's really good. If you haven't seen it, it's worth watching. Um, again, these are just mindless movies you can put on and watch and have a good time with. It just has a bunch of old school act uh, action people mm-hmm. that are in it. It's fun to watch. But I also really do like Sylvester Stallone. He's a, done a lot in his career, especially since he he is is an underdog story with with everything that yep. happened and the fact they didn't want him to play Rocky in the movie and he wouldn't sell the rights to it to let somebody yep. else play Rocky, so he stuck to his guns and look at what it, it is now, which is why this whole Creed thing is like terrible. I don't know if you've read about that or heard about that, where mm-hmm. they've basically taken it from him um, and went ahead and started making the Creed movies without his... Because he was in the first or the second one. Uh, um, I haven't okay. really watched them, if I'm being honest. but I haven't watched them, so I have no idea. Yeah, you Remember, to, I don't like Michael B. Jordan. So. That's true. You don't like Michael B. Jordan. Well, they pretty much stole the Rocky storyline from Sylvester Stallone. He was, he was all over social media about it and pretty upset about it. But... Um, mm, that's his baby. Like, I would be so, like... I mean, exactly. Like, to get that movie up was such a struggle. Yeah. Like, I would be, like... Don't do that to me. Right. You know? It's it's so. terrible. The, the, it just shows you how cutthroat Hollyweird is. But um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm here for it. I'll probably watch it. I don't know if I'll see it in theaters, but I'll definitely, definitely check it check out. Check it out. Yeah. There was something else I was going to tell you, but now I forget what it is. <laughs> Must have been a lie, I guess. Bird Box. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> B- Bird Box Barcelona <laughs> teaser trailer. I did like the original, but I don't think I liked it as much as everybody else did. I think everybody else like was really, really into this movie, and I just thought it yeah. was okay. I so spoiler alert because I know I'm not a Sandra Bullock fan, like a lot of people are. She's one of those two that I'm like, I want to punch her. I oh wow! Her. Yeah, I don't, I don't like her. So that already brought chances down for bird box bird box right yeah Yeah. and it was okay i mean it had moments that were like oh okay but it it, i feel the same it wasn't like how everybody else was reacting so this Mm. i'm not interested i'm not really interested in the plot of like that franchise now i guess whatever yeah. they're gonna do with this because now i'm sure they're gonna put it in every other country well right is i mean is sandra bullock yeah. gonna be in this uh i don't think so did oh. she even live yeah they make it at the end they make she it to did? the or okay. i think so doesn't she i think so or do in just the, the kids make it no she makes it i think she makes it I don't know. I don't remember. No, I don't. This is supposed to be taking place uh, either at the same time or a little bit before what's oh. going on in the original, I think is what I read. But yeah, well, if I'm, she had not been in the original. I do not think it would have done as well as it did. Oh, I don't think so either. I yeah. think she like sold it or propelled that mo- that movie. And it was a Netflix movie, right? It was. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember when that came yeah. out. That wasn't during COVID, was it? No, I think in 2017. Mm. I'd like to guess. I'd like to agree with you. Yeah. Let's see what the internet did. Bird box come out. It's not that old, but it feels like it was a long time ago. December 14th, 2018. Dang. By a whole year, I was off. You were close. I mean, you were close, dude. You were very close. I was pretty close. I was close. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Oh, wow. It feels a lot older though oh well it does i'm trying to remember i'm i everything like pre-covid i it's like all the timeline is so warped for me it's insane like that's how i remember yeah. things now like was that before or after 2020 but i know it's weird all right it's time for okay. the greatest section of in the news the what and the why oh this ought to be good the amityville curse now streaming on tubi um <laughs> I didn't know they were still making these, if I'm being honest. I didn't even... Is this a new one, I take it? Yeah, I didn't know either. That's why I had to add this. I'm like, what? How there many are of these are there? So many of these that it defeats the purpose of the first one at this point. Because 
Well, we I rewatched the first, the original recently, and it just didn't do anything for me. I did love the remake when mm-hmm. it came out with uh, Ryan Reynolds. Love the book. Quick read. Spooky. But well, I didn't even know it was a book. Yeah, it was a book first. Yep. The book is very freaky. It's very old school, like haunted house kind of thing. I thought it okay. was really, really good. Very 70s, you know. But why are we still doing this? And apparently there's a found footage version. There's a 3D which, version as well. I'm looking them up now. Great. Great. I Let's see. I'd like to think that there's probably like... 12 of these do you think there's a you think there's 12 that's what i'm gonna predict all right let's see are you predicting over or under i know so i can't predict i'd be cheating oh that's true never mind like my daughter at disney trivia the little brat Mm -hmm. all right you got me Mm -hmm. you got it all right here we go so we've got amityville from 1979 the original Amityville yep. 2, The Possession in 82. Amityville 3D in 19... This, everything was going 3D in the 80s, though, dude. There's a Friday the 13th 3D. They yeah. were just trying to... Design, I think they redid The Night of the Living Dead in 3D. 3D. Amityville 3D. Horror, The Evil Escapes. That was a TV movie in 89. The Amityville Curse in 1990. We're up to um, five now. Yep. Amityville oh, 1992. It's about time. 1992, obviously. It's about time? Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh God. Listen, it's an architect brings home a mysterious old clock, not knowing that it's haunted by the demonic presence of the Amityville house. Soon the clock <laughs> begins to alter time and space and starts to possess members of the household. Nice. <laughs> nice. 93, Amityville, a uh. new generation. Number eight, you got Amityville Dollhouse from 1996. A children's dollhouse, which is a miniature of the famous haunted Long Island house, is given to a young girl where the demonic evil soon comes out of the cause. More terror. The Amityville Horror, 2005. I believe that's yours, yes? That's the remake, yep. Yeah, that's uh, number nine. Number 10, Amityville The Haunting from 2011. Nice. Number 11, the Amityville Asylum from 2013. Never heard of it. Number 12. Never heard of any of this. <laughs> number 12, Amityville Death House from 2015. Number 13, Amityville Playhouse from 2015. Number 14, Amityville Vanishing Point 2016. Oh my God, I was, I was under. Amityville I was under. Toy Box. 2016. This is 66 minutes long. Where is this like on YouTube or something? Huh. I thought it keeps going. It Six, keeps going. 16, the Amityville Terror from 2016. That's not even rated. No. <laughs> 17, Amityville, No Escape, 2016. That's the same year. They had two Amityville movies the same year. Wow. Oh, three wow. of them. Oh four my God. of them. Four Amityville movies in 2016. What is going on? What is this? I have no idea. 17 Amityville, like a... no escape. Oh, I did that one, didn't I? I I don't even know anymore. <laughs> okay, Look at yeah, this. The Awakening. Amityville, The Awakening, 2017. Amityville, Exorcism, 2017. Amityville, <gasps> Clown House, 2017. Four? One. Two, three, three, three move Amityville moves 2017. Look how short they are, though. Something's weird about this, dude. Like 80, 77, one was 66. This one's 74 minutes. Yeah, that's weird. Are they like homemade? I wonder if they're short. Uh, I don't know. 21, the Amityville murders 2018. Now it's going back to 2012. That's weird. The Amityville Horror, 2012. That's a documentary, it says. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, Amityville Cop, 2021. No way. <laughs> no, no. Amityville this 3D. Is weird. I don't know. Something's weird, but this is on IMDb, so it's not like I just like pull up some wonky-ass website. Yeah. Hang on. Let's look at one of these... Uh, Click on the clown one, yeah. Because <laughs> that, I mean, even the cover. 
hour and 14 minutes. Antique toy. Okay. If those are photos from the movie, that looks awful. Yep, they are. Here, let's go down to the trivia. Let's see if it tells Dustin Ferguson. The poster for Amityville Clown House was featured during the end credits of season one, episode four of MGM Plus original series Amityville and Origin Story in May 2023. There's even a show? Oh my God. I guess, dude. I've never heard of any of these movies, to be honest. Me Let's either. see. That's all the trivia that they got. That's cool. I'm thinking these may be fan, like fan films. Made? But how this yeah. is a two out of ten. 193 people rated it. Oh, you can watch it wow. on Tubi. Great. <laughs> My favorite channel. Tubi. I don't know, dude. I mean, these look is that oh, Michael? God. They look kind of like Michael J. Fox. Uh, yeah. It's true. Oh, John Wick. Oh, okay. Eating yeah, some. Ramen. Look at that, dude. I bet that this is What is happening? Oh, no. Shorts? Okay. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, my. I don't know. I'm this. I'm guessing this is like fan something. Yeah, or like some kind of student. That oh, looks st- suspect. Hey, let's go back here. Google. How many Amityville? <laughs> the mystery continues. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's no way there's 28 of those right here. Let's look at this. Okay, here. I feel like yeah. this. Well, I don't know. Is that fucking cloud on this one too? Maybe it really is a legit movie. No, I think it's this one's This one's missing it, right? Uh, I do. I don't know. I'm going to have to punt. I don't know. I, I'm here. Wikipedia. They, they know everything, right? They do. Certifiable. I don't know, dude. Look, I, I, there's, here's all the films. Look, I think there might be 28 of these fucking things. This what? is Amityville Vampire. That wasn't even on the other one. I'm done. I give up. I don't know. I have no the idea. Point is, my prediction was absolutely wrong. I can't believe they're still making these. Like, I guess there's a huge Ooh. fandom though. If they're still making this, or maybe it's like a joke now. Let's just see what shit we can come up with. Dude, that 100%. Um, and this that's funny. This one is actually on Tubi as well. I wonder if all those are like Tubi related movies or something. But um, maybe. Yes. That fits the what and the why perfectly. So I figured. I Hocus figured. Pocus 3 is happening. This doesn't surprise me at all. I think that the Hocus Pocus 2 did fairly well. Did it not? So I contemplated putting it there only because. I it probably did well monetarily, but I most people I heard from they didn't really like it. I think people our age didn't like it, but I think people like my kids' age did like it. Like my daughters really enjoyed it and like they watched it a lot. So Okay. um, I think what they did is they did a good job of bringing back the Sanderson sisters, but they also like gave you new characters to like and kind of root for for like my kids because my kids like Charlotte really likes the original. Um, she did before the new one came out. Lucy didn't have any, want anything to do with the original. It honestly kind of scared her a little bit, but the new one she could watch just fine. And they liked the characters in the new one. So, okay. Um, so that's fair. Yeah. It was very, very like Disney movie feel is what it, it, and my kids loved like they love the zombies movies. They love the um, descendants movies. They love all those Disney movies. So it makes sense okay. that they liked it. So I could see this yeah. from like for their generation. I see this like continuing on. I are yeah. the Sanderson sisters going to be in this one again or no? Uh, I think so. They had their pictures up and everything. Oh, wow. So see, that surprises me. because I feel like with the way that the last one ended, that was kind of like the end of their story. Oh, I mean, I didn't watch it. It's fine. I don't. It's fine because. I just I heard so many negative things about it from people our age that yeah. I was like, well, yet again, if I'm going to choose what I'm going to watch, it's not going to be something that's getting eh reviews right. versus something else I could watch. But eventually I'll check it out because I grew up loving the original. Right. But I also haven't watched the original in a very long time. 
Mm. So I don't know if it's has it aged well. It, it's eh. Uh, eh, it's okay. It's not bad. I I don't mind watching yeah. it. It's just I it was always corny at the time, right? It was even yeah. corny back then. It was almost like a parody of itself. And this one is very similar to that, but modernized. And all of the negativity I heard about it was from people our age that had nostalgic ties to the original. Got and it. this movie came out so much further after the that original too. and it's like modernized for like kids today and it's just it's different yeah. it's just not it's not the traditional sequel i think everybody wanted this is more of a reboot okay. i think i think this this should fall under reboot versus sequel if i'm being honest because they really Got did it. kind of like a soft reboot for a different generation so all right fair enough so i this one it was tricky i didn't know cuz it's like I heard it was bad, bad mm-hmm. but I know it made because I mean, the day that came out, my Instagram feed was, <laughs> oh, my God, look at my girls and us watching Hocus Pocus, like people our age getting yeah. together to watch it. People who have kids. What? It's like, wow, this this definitely made money. So oh, for sure. But uh, did it yeah. go straight to streaming, though, which I don't understand it how did. those movies make money, I guess, maybe from new subscriptions or if people bought it. I think I actually have it. Somehow I got a code for it, I think, but nonetheless, um, I would Wait, venture to yeah, guess that went to streaming. I would venture yeah. to guess that if I we asked the kids, "Do you want to watch?" Hey, we're gonna watch Hocus Pocus. Do you want to watch the the original or the new one? I bet they would watch the new one. That's an interesting survey question. Yeah. So. Hmm. Okay. Well, fair enough because I'm not up to date with that movie, but. It's like, okay, here we go. Another, because now that one did well. So they're going to continue. Let's see how many more they're going to. I think Disney come, needs come a win. So, I mean, Little Mermaid, I don't know if it's going to make. What What did I say that movie's budget was? 360, 320 million or something? It was a lot. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. Um, yeah. But, I mean, it's still up there in the box office. But, I mean, I don't think it did. The, the Right from what I was reading, the biggest one was still Mario. Mm. Okay. Funny enough, out of all those, it, even Guardians, I thought did okay. I thought it was going to do better because I know you talk to Marvel people or like Marvel movie fans, not comic book fans. Like they love Guardians more than a lot of the other stuff or Iron Man. But okay. that one still didn't do as well as this Spider-Man and apparently Mario. Mario did amazing. Yeah, for sure. But I, I also feel like Guardians, that's not a kid's movie, right? Like, like you wouldn't take your no, kids to that, not, I don't think. And I not think really. we, <clears throat> I feel like Spider-Man probably is. You can take your kids and same yeah. with Mario. But like, I feel like people are, and they hit at the right time because it's people, yeah. are, their kids are out of school right now. And I think Mario came out over Memorial Day weekend or over a long weekend, didn't it? Uh, spring break. Spring break. So was that smart. was it. Yeah. And, and didn't it yeah. have a four day? Didn't it come out like a Wednesday? Yes, it did. Yeah. It had the four day thing. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, I, I right, can see so. it, but, uh, I okay. I can see it. So new and upcoming theater streaming releases, Transformers rise of the beast hits theaters June 9th. Funny story. So when Abby and I first got together, I was super into the Transformers movies. I loved them. I think at that point, this would have been 2010. So I don't know how many of those had came out. I know we had, she and I have went to the theater to see at least one or two of them. Um, Mm -hmm. But as I got older and busier and the movies just kind of just continued to come out, like I've kind of strayed away from, I don't even know that I've seen the last one or two of these. However, when I was a kid, I didn't even like Transformers. I liked Beast Wars, which is what this is kind of based off of, or I think where they're headed toward. But um, I would like to see this, but it's not one I'm going to run out and see. Again, you're just adding another movie into the mix. Like I would see Boogeyman before I would see Transformers. So you're talking The Machine, Fast X, Boogeyman, Transformers at this point. And there's no way I'm yeah. going to see all those movies. What yeah. What are your thoughts on the Transformers franchise and this new movie? Uh I so when the I never watched the cartoon, uh I just heard about it, but when the first movie came out, I went to the theater. I loved it. Yeah. I thought it was great. It was a it was really well done. It was and it it was appropriate for people who never watched the cartoon or cared. Like it just transferred well. Um, I and part two, I watched in the theater too. I enjoyed it, and then after that, I didn't watch any of them. 
anymore. Mm. So this is another one that kind of like Expendables, I didn't think they were still making them, but I guess so. This one actually looks interesting. Like I would, I'm not going to go watch it at the theater either, even though this is one of those that would probably be fun at the theater. Any action movie is kind of fun. Yes. Loud, big screen, but I'd watch this. The other ones didn't really catch my attention. This one does. Well, I mean, it has a New York element. I'm always in for a New York uh, background, but like the whole beast thing, like it's kind of cool. So I definitely watch it at home for Mm. sure. So but yeah, the first two were great back then. Like I was pumped watching those. (laughs) Like I even when it came out, like I watched it at home a few times. Like It was fun, especially watching it with uh, with friends. It was a good time. It was a good time. I was super into them, and they, when they first came out, I remember how great they were to see in theaters, and like the rewatchability yeah. of them was great. So uh, mm-hmm. there's, I didn't even realize this, but so Transformers came out in 2007. Wow. Uh, Transformers okay. Revenge of the Fallen came out in 2009. Transformers mm-hmm. Dark of the Moon, I think is yeah, Dark of the Moon. Yeah. So that is the last one I have seen. Okay, uh, that is the one Abby and I saw in theaters. That is the one where they did not bring Megan Fox back. So she was in one and two. Her and right. Michael Bay had all of the differences and issues on the set of the second one. They did not bring her back for three. Uh, that okay. was the last one I saw. I didn't see Transformers: Age of Extinction, Transformers: yeah. The Last Night. Have not seen it. I did not watch the Bumblebee nope. movie, and then Transformers: Rise of the Beast. That's the new one. So yeah. Um, wow. So there's. Five? Well, not including one, Bumblebee. Two, three, There's five, four, five now. Six. This will be the seventh one that comes out. Oh yeah. my god! You see, like if you're not keeping up with these things, like it's easy to just be like, "Oh, this is still around." <laughs> yeah, because what Shia LaBeouf is not in any of them after three. I didn't even remember he was in three. So okay, yeah, because I know I think Wahlberg. Wahlberg in. is in four, yes. Yeah. So they brought in Mark Marky Mark to try to Marky Mark. Who's uh, in the, I've never even heard of the last night. What's this one? Let's see who's me either. In Mark like, Wahlberg. What? Oh, there you go. He's in two of them two of them then? He's in four and five. Then you got the Bumblebee okay. movie, which is like a spinoff. So I don't think right. any of these people are yeah, none of them are in it. And then you got the new one coming out. So yeah. Let's see oh. the girl they got to replace Megan Fox. I know that was a huge controversy. For this movie? Nah, for three, because they didn't bring oh. Megan Fox back, and he had like a new girlfriend in it. Uh, mm. Rosie Huntington, maybe, or I don't know, one of these gals here, but huh. interesting. Yeah, I didn't realize there were all these Transformer movies. Me either. So there you go. You learned two things today. There's a lot of Amityville movies, like a ridiculous amount, mm-hmm. and apparently a lot of transformer movies a lot so. if you had to guess just throwing a number out what do you think the um combined box office of the first one two three four five six movies is that they grossed uh it says yeah box office yep the box office for the first six movies 400 400 million yeah 4.84 4 billion dollars <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> that's why they make more. <laughs> wow, it's freaking smashed my tooth. Yeah, four point. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry, $4.84 billion. I was <gasps> off by a point ten. Oh, excuse me. I could use some of that. <laughs> Dude, I, I could use a point ten billion. For real. Oh, my God. Okay, well, that explains... It just goes to show you when you find when you like something and you keep following it or it's your niche or whatever, like there's a crowd for it. And clearly four billion dollars worth of a crowd. Who do you think distributes these movies? What what um what picture company? Paramount. It is. Is it? Well, look, okay. I'm glitch dancing. I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> yeah, Paramount. Wow. Am I still gl- okay, dude? Listen to this though; they're all out of order. So here's the chronological way you should watch Transformers. I didn't even know this. So didn't know this either. Yeah, here's how you should watch them timeline wise. Okay. Bumblebee from 2018 is the first movie you should watch. Okay. Transformers: Rise of the Beast, 20th, the new one. That's the second one you should watch. Oh, okay. 
Transformers 2007 is three. Transformers, yes. Revenge of okay. the Fallen is four. So the second okay. one. The sequel. Transformers Dark of the Moon uh, is the f- fifth one you should watch. It's also the third movie. So those are all those timelines. Transformers Age of Extinction. The last night. So, okay, so this wasn't that interesting. Bumblebee no. is actually at the very beginning of it. I didn't realize that. And then, and then this new one is the second one, technically, yeah. then. Interesting. Huh. Okay. All right. Well, well, we just went down a huge rabbit hole, Alice. Um, <laughs> we always do. I know, right? On freaking Transformers and Expendables movies. Brooklyn 45 premieres on Shutter June 9th. I would be lying to you if I told you I knew what that was. I don't, It looks like a, a haunting... Some, honestly, I don't know that much either. I saw it really quick on Shutter's Instagram today, and I just wanted to add it to... Because it's only Transformers coming out in theater this weekend. So I was like, oh. After just okay. finding out that they grossed on six films almost $5 billion, would you want to go head to head with that movie? Correct. Now, knowing that, it makes sense. But initially, I'm like, wow, why does this get its own weekend? Oh, well, this sounds right up your alley, dude. Brooklyn 45 is a 2023 American real time supernatural thriller film written and directed by Ted something about a group of. <laughs> military veterans holding an impromptu seance in the parlor of a Brooklyn brownstone at the close of World War II. Oh, I'm in. It's it's New York. A ghost and military. I like war stuff. I'm in. Oh, I'm watching it this weekend. Then I can do a reel. Done. Oh, my God, dude. You have to see this. <laughs> what? Three and a half hours into podcasting. I'm, 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 I got, I'm getting slap happy. Look at this guy. This guy's in this movie. Oh, God. Who? Larry. F- look, does that not look like the poor man's version of Jack Nicholson? Oh, my God. It does. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be joking. Look at this guy's ears. Oh, dude. How That's I- bad. I'll let you know. Look at this. Let's zoom in on Jack Nicholson. Look at that guy. Oh my god, he does like the eyebrows and everything. He's even trying to look like him a little bit. He's even bit, trying. Listen, dude. Look at this guy's ears though, seriously. Yeah. That's rough. Let's look at let's see what this guy's up to. Larry Fessen <laughs> Fessenden. Fezzle. He's oh, trying oh, yeah. to be Jack Nicholson. Oh yeah. Dude. He is. He's in. He's in. Oh my. <laughs> what is he doing? Let's see. A lot of B horror yeah, looks terrible, like dude. Freaking B whole horror, dude. This is terrible. Look at that guy. Wow. Oh wow. That's creepy, dude. Oh look, he's in all the animal uh he's in all of the Amityville movies. Is anyone surprised? No. <laughs> I'm not surprised, dude. All right, well, that wraps up the movie news for In the News. We are going to kick it over to you, Erica, for gaming news. Only three this week. You are you went from like 50 the one week. Yeah. They just gave you too two. much. They gave you too much, yeah. dude, is what happened. They did. Well, that showcase like did me in. I was like, whoa, there's so <laughs> much going on. It's great. What do I do? Oh, my God. Now I'm so overwhelmed. So there's a... Just so everyone knows, there's a summer sale on the PlayStation Store going on right now. I'm personally not buying anything because nothing caught my attention, but there's games on there that are on sale, FYI. And I, uh, our good friend Mark from Elm Street was the one who gave me the heads up. And I'm like, God damn it, now I have to spend <laughs> money. But luckily, there's nothing there that caught my attention. Thank so, goodness, dude. Wow. Thank God. But anyway, on to some news. We have the Grey Hill Incident is to release on Steam on June 9th and then on console, PS5, Xbox on June 13th. I'm definitely going to check this out because it is an alien game. Oh, boy. Never played an alien game, so that should be fun. And if I keep trying to do these uh, private streams where I can record reactions and eventually edit it, it should be a good time. It'll well, half the time. battle's recording it. The other half is editing it. Is. it. But I, I have faith in you. I think you're going to get it done. Thank you. Thank you. Because I think it'll be good content. It'll it'll be funny, at least, somewhere down the line. This game, I saw the trailer for it. I died laughing. It's so stupid, but I'm in. It's called Gory 
Cuddly Carnage. It's coming to PC, PS5, the Switch, and Xbox. I don't recommend this for uh, Charlie, but uh-huh. okay, because it's a it's a cat, okay, on a hoverboard, like on a different planet, and it's like killing killer toys. So it's very gory. That's the only reason I'm saying like, dude, I'm not, gonna have to but... eat this for me. Yes, I mean. I was in with the cat. I'm just like, what the hell is it? <laughs> like, this looks so stupid. <laughs> but it actually looks really entertaining, like a mindless game where you just go around and like uh, customize your character, and it's this cool looking cat and a uh, hoverboard. Dude, that so, sounds right up her alley. If I'm being honest, if just if I'm being completely honest, it sounds right up Charlie Manson's freaking alley, dude. Great. So there you go. Now you have the game. You can get her. And I'm in on this. I didn't see when our release date is, but once it does, I will let you guys know anyway. And uh, the big one that came out this week is Diablo 4. It came out on the 6th. So I am interested to see what the numbers will be on this one because this one's highly anticipated. Um, And from the reviews, it's gotten really great reviews on it. Uh, And it looks like from pre-release, it's already selling a lot. So let's see. I'm sure it'll it'll crunch some numbers out there. I have not played one of these since the first one. Okay. And so I'm really into really interested in getting a a better laptop to potentially play online games and because st- this to me is better on a computer versus gotcha. a console. Is this like an I open world started- game? Yeah, and, and well, and that's the other thing. I don't know. This whole open world thing is too much for me. So we'll see. <laughs> But then I have the FOMO. Like, I, I don't want to miss out. I can't miss out. But I've seen commercials for this everywhere. I was in, at a, uh, yeah. where was I at? I was at a B-dubs eating lunch one day while I was traveling. And they like every other commercial was this Diablo 4 game. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's like, uh, it's one of the big anticipated releases. So that's why I'm saying that I can't wait to see numbers over the weekend where people are buying it, playing it. And uh, like I said, on IGN, which is one of those big gaming websites, they gave it a 9 out of 10. So it's really, it's doing well so far. So we'll see. But again, it's one of those games that, since it is open world, we'll see. Right. It's on the back burner for somebody like me for now. <laughs> when you have the Too one much. you're obsessed with now. So you, it's just, it's going to have to wait. It will. And then, then I have to catch up with something else. It's ridiculous, but... I'd like to because I'd like to see what the what the big deal is, but we'll see. It's exciting. It's exciting stuff. So that's the gaming news for this week. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. You did a great job. Absolutely fantastic. But I think and again, thank you for putting the majority of this together. I think I have like two bullet points. So the majority of this was you and all of your hard efforts. Oh, thank you. But hard yes, you did efforts. add. I get it. Yeah. It's 11.54. You make sense. Don't worry. That's true. Thank you. I drank a lot of water <laughs> today. It's a, I'm very, very hydrated. And the brain is firing on all cylinders. Is there anything <laughs> else you'd like to say before we wrap it up? That's it for me. In that case, thank you to all of the patrons who give us your hard-earned money to listen to us talk about movies and games and TV shows and uh, editing and all the other stuff that we get <laughs> on here and talk about for hours all the patrons are getting hours of bonus content every episode early exclusive episodes behind the scenes audio and video and exclusive first dibs and hmc merch when it comes out there'll be some new merch coming out in july after the mid-season break along with some other stuff so thank you to colette s matt b zach f rosalind vicky d brian hathaway from the don't go out there podcast kimberly d fleish connor two chicks in a horror flick caitlin ashley v the og patron crubies mark and rook from a podcast on elm street and my lovely mother nana stevie nicks uh, next week's episode is not going to be in the news because we didn't have the ability to record in the news because I am not going to be here. I'm going to be elsewhere. So next week we have a special episode for you guys. We decided to get together and rank all of the scream movie openings, not the endings, the openings. Yes. (laughs) Clarifying. Just to clarify. And there were some um, disagreements on some. And there were some that 
you know, fell in odd places. So I think people will be interested to hear where we rank the Scream movie openings. Um, yes. So check that out next week because in the news we'll be on a one week hiatus until um, then. So anything else you want to say before we're out of here? That's it on my end. All right. Thank you for hanging out with me for like three and a half hours. That was very fun. It was always fun. <laughs> All right, we are out of here. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, y'all. Has oh. it really been three hours? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm.